Hello humans, it has been a minute. Also, there are rainbows in my room right now. It's rainbow o'clock. This is gonna be a quick video because uh, I am working on way too many things and I am trying my best to get everything from last year done uh, as soon as possible <laughs> so that I can kind of move on without the weight of all these projects on me, um, which I've been feeling a lot recently. If you follow me on Twitter, uh, you know, I was talking about um, how hard it is emotionally to do a Kickstarter and how I was definitely unprepared for that despite seeing many other people go through emotional things during their Kickstarter. I don't know. I, I just didn't expect it. I can take all different kinds of critique for creative stuff and personal things, behavioral stuff, you know, uh, and like adjust and change with like minimal emotional response, but for some reason Kickstarter did me in emotionally. <laughs> so, it, I mean, it's not bad, it's a learning process, it's just, it, uh, it, it's more difficult than I thought it would be. Uh, but I wanted to talk about, um, real quick, uh, I guess inspiration from other places. Uh, I mostly get my inspiration not from gaming things, but from other media. Uh, and the world around me. Um, so you know that I've been talking about the Anthropocene. I've been um, super influenced by conservation, veganism this year. Uh, my snakes, of course. <laughs> For, you know, Lesbo snakes and a cozy den. Um, David Lynch, because, you know, Twin Peaks uh, sparked inspiration in me. Twin Peaks The Return. Um, all those things are kind of what influence my game design, and they come from outside of games. Like, there are not really other games that are looking at topics like that, I mean there are, I'm not saying that my games are super unique, but um, I, don't, I don't get inspiration from like other fantasy settings necessarily, you know, or sci-fi games or stuff like that. I'd say most of my game inspiration comes from other game mechanics because they are very singularly role-playing game stuff, you know, um, there is some crossover with like freeform and theater and uh, uh, board games and card games, but for the most part, role-playing game mechanics are a thing unto themselves, so that's different. But, but, but the inspiration for the themes and topics and what my games are about come from outside of games. Um, and so I guess, uh, you know, when you're creating games, take a moment to step outside of games and do other things. Read about other stuff. Um, you know, go for walks, be interested in, in the world and in other hobbies and media, and that will really influence your creativity. You know, don't, don't feel like you have to stay locked in games. I get most of my inspiration from outside of games. What's inspiring me this week is I've been listening to, um, well, two great podcasts when I go to the gym. Um, one of them is The Anthropocene Reviewed, of course, by John Green, and the other one is uh, Switchblade Sisters, which is a horror podcast I've talked about before. Um, well, not horror, but a genre movie podcast where they pick a movie to talk about that's a genre film, um, and it's usually two cis women in conversation um, about, uh, you know, kind of the, the feminist undertones or the deconstruction of that genre film in some way and how it impacted what they created. Uh, so the host kind of interviews um, a, a writer or a filmmaker or a director, uh, a woman who is in film, um, and they use this kind of as the, the conversation piece about uh, talking about that person's films and what they do and what they write or what they create. It's a great podcast because it delves into um, not only film criticism and, and genre in general, but um, which I, I find very interesting and useful for my own creative stuff, but also the creative process of those filmmakers and creators. So like how they go about creating their stuff. And I think there are some correlations between film creation and game creation. They both have a lot of moving parts. They both often have teams of people working together through um, various uh, communication like tools, like uh, either virtually or in reality or through the technology that they're using to make the game itself or the film itself. And so, so you can kind of see those, I don't know, those correlations in my mind are very similar um, with the creative process that goes into 
you know, writing and essentially directing a game. <laughs> Uh, so so I, I love the insights. This this week they're talking about Under the Skin, um, which is actually one of my favorite movies. I thought it was super cool. If you haven't seen it, um, it stars, Scar <laughs> stars Scarlett Johansson, who we all know is, you know, a little problematic, but so is everybody. I hope she gets better, because <laughs> I really love her. Um, and uh, basically she, uh, you know, slight spoilers, you kind of know that she's weird from the beginning, um, but she is more or less an alien in a human body. Um, and she doesn't know that, it seems like, in the beginning. Um, and that is super cool, like I feel like that's my gender identity. <laughs> you know, like I, I, I just really identified with her struggle to understand her body and her gender in the movie because that I often identify with that struggle um, with my own gender and body. So super cool in those ways, kind of a little problematic in some others, but overall very enjoyable genre movie, super cool. Uh, but the director was talking about um, uh, the woman director who's the guest star is talking about how the director of Under the Skin um, figured out what they wanted to take from the book and turn it and put in the movie. So it's originally a book. The movie is very different from the book. I haven't read it. Um, I guess the book is actually about veganism, <laughs> which is interesting, uh, but the movie is not at all. Um, but it basically distills the same themes and feeling that the book has. Um, and when they asked the writer, you know, how did you feel about how the movie changed your book? And he said, I thought it was marvelous because it captured the heart of the story. It didn't try to recreate scene for scene or plot device by plot device the actual story that he wrote, but rather the heart and the feeling of his story. Which I thought was so cool when you think about book to film adaptations because a lot of adaptations get it wrong and then they try to capture the plot but they miss the feeling entirely or the, or the meaning entirely, you know? Um, and their process to do this was, was what stuck in my mind. Basically, um, the director read the book but the writer didn't. And um, when the director was communicating to the writer uh, what to put in, in the film, the writer asked the director, what were your favorite parts of the book and why? And the director then, instead of relaying the entire story to the writer or the writer reading the book, just kind of told the most important parts and scenes and feelings and themes and characters to the writer. And the writer then distilled that into the script for the film and what it became. I thought that was so smart. and. It kind of relates to the, the way my brain connected this to game design is that it basically is is taking parts of something that you really love and then recombining them into something new, right? So instead of just copying, um, you know, word for word or scene for scene or game mechanic for game mechanic, it's kind of taking bits and pieces and remixing them. Um, and I think the best artists. This is how they make new and exciting things, because nothing's new. You can't invent something completely new. But what you can do is find the things that you love and remix them into something that is yours. And the, the way that they were talking about that process of like how the, the director read the book and then communicated to the writer the best parts and the writer created it, it's like kind of like a three-step process of distillation of those ideas through three different people. So it was like filtered down and then like hit kind of like an explosion of here's the new thing. And that's how it became Under the Skin, the film with Scarlett Johansson. Super cool process. <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna think about that three part distillation in the future when I'm creating new games. How am I distilling this into something new specifically by taking it through that three step process? And maybe even bouncing those ideas off of other collaborators or, or designers, like what were your favorite parts? How can we turn that into something that is ours? And when I say the, your favorite parts uh, of that thing, I mean for game design, 
what games are we looking at that fit the themes and story of this game we want to make? So maybe three games that you look at that are, that are similar in theme or process or mechanics but that you want to take ideas from and change and recombine to make your own. Um, or, you know, what stories is it similar to um, that we want to recombine and make our own? Uh, you know, so that you, you eventually come up with something new instead of just remaking something that's been done a million times. That's my two minutes of inspiration. It's probably more than two minutes. A little rambly today because <laughs> I'm so busy and all over the place. Took Andromeda to the vet this morning. All snakes have been to the vet this month. Um, but thanks for watching my video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Share if you found any inspiration in this video. Um, and write down below, let me know what you think about how you recombine things in a similar way to what the director did for Under the Skin. Um, and what podcasts you're listening to that are super inspiring you this year. It's a new year. We're getting it. We're doing it. I'll see you next vid. <laughs>